Welcome to our few moments together on the Parsha. This Shabbos, of course, is Shabbos Voracious. I'm videoing this particular segment of our Parsha series in what is called the sealed room. Last week, when the sirens went off, all families were told to go into their sealed rooms. At the time, we were in shul, and we went into the shelter, which is a sealed room, and in all the houses built since the Gulf War, we have a sealed room. As you can see, you can see outside, the window is open, the sealed doors are open, but I'm going to demonstrate to you how protected the sealed rooms are with steel reinforced walls and concrete, and it is supposed to protect against even a missile attack. Of course, nothing is ultimately indestructible, but it certainly helps, and it's a sealed room. Follow me. I'm going to go over here to the back over here, and we're going to raise the uh, first, we're going to raise the screen, because the screen protects from getting any of the uh, bugs that are in the air at large. And we're going to oops, try to open the screen up over here and get it up and pull. We're going, we're going to pull the doors shut. Very, these are very, very heavy steel doors. We're going to pull the doors shut and after we do that we're going to lock them so that they can't be open from the outside. We're going to lower this, uh, what is called a tris, a, a, you might say a shade, but it's also of some protective value. Not much. Then there, of course there's a steel uh, reinforced door with a lock and key. We're going to lock that completely like this, and then we're going to close this window, which is a double, very thick, bulletproof glass, and we're going to seal that too. So now, what we've got is a sealed room, which is hermeneutically seal sealed with all the walls are reinforced concrete, and the bars and the steel, the doors of the window, are reinforced. Those doors are very, very heavy, and the point is that if, God forbid, there is another attack on Yerushalayim, what we would do is we prepare before Shabbos, we're going to bring food in here, we're going to bring drink in here, and we might have to stay here until the all clear sounds. So this is this is something that we're going to have to live through on this Shabbos Parshas Voracious. We don't expect the sirens to go off. The war is being pursued very intelligently, as you would expect, and there isn't really a tremendous amount of news, thankfully so. The IDF is keeping the lid on so that the nations of the world don't necessarily step in and stop what needs to be done in order to get rid of the terrorists, of the Hamas entity, the Machshimam and Zichram, totally, and we hope that in time to come we're going to be here hearing only good news. We've been talking, and all the Rabbanim have been asking their congregations and their students, the Talmidim, to, to make the, the world a better place by being better themselves. In this week's Sedra, we have so many personalities and so many basic fundamental issues facing all humanity. As we know, good and evil makes its appearance in this week's Sedra. There's one personality that's somewhat enigmatic that needs a little explanation. I'd like to focus on that for the next few minutes to see if we can't learn something and gain something from this unusual personality. As the Pesach says in Perikei Chavdalim, Vayishalech Chanoch Esha Elohim, Chanoch walked with God, Ve'einenu, but he's no longer there, Ki lo kacho so Elohim, because Hashem took him. What exactly this means is open to so much interpretation. He walked, Chanoch walked with Hashem, and of course, the word Chanoch comes from the word Chinuch, which means education, and perhaps Chanoch, as Rav Shem Shemaferl Hirsch explains, was someone who educated himself, but no one else in the world, and didn't make the world a better place. Avraham Avinu, when he educated the world, he kept, didn't keep it to himself. He saw to it that others would become better. Chanoch kept it to himself. He educated himself. 
to walk with God, but Hashem said, this is not the way to make the world a better place. But there's a fascinating Medrash Pelia that is quoted by Rabbi Yisrael Salanta. Let me read you what the words of the Medrash say about Chanoch. It says, I'm sorry, it's the Medrash Talpios, not Pelia, Medrash Talpios. It says, Chanoch tofer ne'olem hava. Chanoch was a sower of shoes. He made shoes. He was a shoemaker. Va'al kol tfira utfira, and on each and every stitch that he would make in the shoes, ha'yom miyached yichudim lekono. He would say l'shem yichud to his creator. Chanoch would go around when he would make his shoes. L'shem yichud kudshem yichud. He would say, "I'm doing this for the sake of Hashem," and he would say that for each and every stitch that he would put into the shoe. So Rabbi Yisrael Salanta asks a, a very interesting question. He says, you know, if you give a shoemaker a responsibility, or any artist, any worker a responsibility, and on each and every word that he records, or computer that he types, or law that he, uh, a law, lawyer's brief, or real estate transaction that he's working on, for each and every word, the accountant is going to say, and so on and so forth. The books are never going to get balanced. The computer job is not going to get done. The law brief will not be right. The doctor will not be able to examine the patient because he's on each and every time. He touches his hand. He says, touches his heart. Touches his head. Nothing's going to get done. You can't do that when you're responsible for others, says Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. So really, Rabbi Yisrael Salanta says, what did Chanoch do? When he said L'Shem Yichud, what he meant was, I am doing this stitch, and I've got to do it perfectly. I have to do my job well. And he would focus on his responsibility for his job, and he would make sure that the job was done well. Perhaps that's what we should get from all this. When we're at our jobs, in these times where we have so many things in our minds, and so many things happening for Klai Yisrael that we want to correct, let's focus on our jobs. Do our jobs well. And then, when we're finished with our jobs, when we have a lunch break, when we go home, now we can focus on our next job. Now we can focus on our learning, on our tehillim, on our davening. And now we can focus on the needs of Klai Yisrael and put our minds into what we need to put our minds into at that point. If we would do this according to the way Rabbi Yisrael Salanta learns Pshat and Chanoch, the world would be a better place because we wouldn't be focusing only on Chanoch ourselves. We'd be focusing on educating the world and making it a better place instead of only on ourselves. This little Chanoch story, which has so many commentaries on it, and has so much to think about, gives us an understanding of perhaps how we can grow, how we can become better by focusing intently on our job at hand. When we're at work, let's focus at work. When we're home, when we're in shul, when we're in davani, let's focus on our davani. What a great way to start. Parshas Bereshis. Mevorchem hachodesh cheshvan ma cheshvan. It should be a month of miracles for Klai Yisrael, that we see the end of this war and the destruction of terrorism and the evil Hamas, and that Klai Yisrael should see Yeshua, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should watch over each and every one of us, and we should do the best we can to focus on our responsibilities so that the world becomes a better place. Shabbat Shalom and